Hey. Of course. I mapped out the most effective way to see all the best panels and guest stars while still leaving time to browse around the marketplace. You don't think they'll mind? Okay. Thanks, guys. That actually came out pretty well. Oh, sorry. I probably should have asked if you wanted your photo taken. Come on, let's go check out the first panel on our list. I guess it never came up. That's true. I mainly enjoy the storyline, but a strong cast will always make the adventure more fun. Anyway, I think learning how to make a visual novel would be interesting. Hello everyone, I am Dishu from Pixel Fate, and these are my colleagues. So, who is ready to make a visual novel? Let's talk about how to make a school slice of life romance visual novel. We have a four step approach to this. First, you should pick popular character tropes for the romance options and make them all into waifu material. I would highly recommend including at least one tsundere archetype since it seems to be a popular choice. Secondly, make sure you have an abundance of comedy. Clever fourth wall breaking may be appropriate. Thirdly, you want to make sure the player is engaged. Give them choices so they feel immersed and active in the world. And lastly, you must include words and phrases like Oni-chan, sugoi desne, senpai, and baka at every possible opportunity. If people start saying your project is for weebus, then you're on the path to success. That's it from us! Thank you all for coming out! It was really good! 
They covered a broad range of subjects. Well, I'm looking forward to the panel with singer Emma Lee. It's not for another hour, though. So, let's go explore the market. <laughs> Pikachu! It's so cute! If you're into that sort of thing... Wait, I can pay for it. Really, you don't... <laughs> Stop! It's almost time for the Emily panel! Let's go! What's your favorite cover to have worked on? The ones that are the most challenging are usually my favorite. <laughs> it's fun to try something new. Do you have any singing tips? Practice and practice. And then when you think you've done enough, practice some more. It's a simple and boring answer, but it's the truth. Why are your lyrics different from the source translations? Well, direct translations never fit the meter of the song, so they have to be altered slightly to fit and rhyme and flow. Yeah, but I took that language class in high school and used Google Translate, and it was all wrong! It's hard if you've never tried it yourself, but if you take a direct translation and try to sing it to the song, you'll hear how awkward it sounds. Do you sing in the shower? Yeah, and just as badly as everyone else.
Lies. If it's not too much trouble, I think I'd like that. Hey! H Hi! H could I get your autograph? <laughs> of course. Who should I make it out to? Cowry, please. All right, here you go. I can't believe I got to meet Emily. You think so too? I was thinking the exact same thing, but didn't want to say anything in case it was all in my head. Okay, next on the agenda... It's getting pretty late. We should check into our hotel. I'm sorry, I can't seem to find your reservation. Do you have the confirmation number? Um, yeah, hold on. I'm very sorry. I don't understand. I booked it a few days ago. Here's the confirmation I got. Unfortunately, since she booked through a third party agency, there must have been a complication, and we never received the reservation. We're at full capacity for the room type that you booked. Isn't there anything you can do? Um... Okay... Let me see... We do have a suite available. Since this was a system glitch, I'll waive the upgrade costs and we'll charge you the same price you were quoted for the standard room. Thank you. No problem. Again, sorry for the inconvenience. We hope you enjoy your stay. Stop being a pervert! I didn't book this! Ugh! What 
what is this room? The room I booked had two beds. There's only one in here and other... weird things. What do you mean there are no more rooms with two beds? That's what... Yes, I can see there's a couch. <sighs> We're stuck with the room. Nothing else is available, and I doubt any other hotels will have rooms either due to the convention. Yeah. What? Get off of there! You stay on your side, and I'll stay on mine. No funny business. Fine. Oh, did I wake you? Sorry. Morning. I ordered room service.
Yes. Actually, I had a really weird dream. Yeah, it was you and me and we were at a restaurant. Or I think it was a cafe. I know, we were just chatting like we always do. But then, out of nowhere, you said... Never mind! Forget I said anything! Hurry up and eat your breakfast or we'll miss our train! Thanks for coming with me. I had a really great time. I I'll see you again on Monday. your home. Can you pick me up from the bookstore? Please, can you get me? Bookstore. So glad you're here. Yeah, I'm fine. No, the blood's not mine. No. He saved me from those guys. I don't know. There was a group of them. Three, I think, waiting for the bus. And when they showed up, they started saying all these things about me. They were being so gross and creepy, but I 
tried to ignore them because I figured the bus would be there soon and it wouldn't matter. And then one of the guys tried to put his arm around me, freaked out, and I guess I pushed him and he got really angry. And then the other guy grabbed me and... No! Can't intervene before anything could have happened. He came barreling out of the bookstore, screaming at that guy to let me go, and then he punched him right in the face! The guy was super angry, and he and his friends ganged up on him. I tried to stop them from ganging up on Ken! There was no way I was going to let Ken fight them alone. Especially not when this fight only happened because of me. But I didn't really need to help. Ken beat two of them up by himself. The third one had to help them up so they could escape. some experience with martial arts. Uh, what do you mean, some experience? You're a second young black belt! Of course! Anyway... I told Ken he should go back inside, but he refused. It's not safe for her to wait alone. I only did what anyone would have done. Don't be so modest. You were amazing out there. I'm fine. Nothing's broken. I told him we should call an ambulance, but he refused. I promise I'm okay. I'm sorry for causing you such trouble. He let me call his brother to come pick him up. I appreciate the thought, but... I would feel more at ease if you took Nikki home. What if they come back? I know my brother will be here in a few minutes. Me too. They're probably in the middle of closing. I'm sure your co-workers will let you back in. They're probably wondering what happened to you anyway.
Okay. Sure. Of course. Thank you for your trust. Sorry. Sorry. What was that all about? Why wasn't I invited? Why did Ken bow? Oh, it's, uh, it's because he's, uh, my senpai? What did you do? Uh, uh, of course. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If I hadn't gone to visit Ken, I wouldn't have lost track of time and stayed out so late, and then I wouldn't have gotten into this mess and made everyone worry. But if I... I think I'll go take a shower. Is Nikki gone? Did something happen? I heard back from the P.I. Ezra Wilson. Yeah, what do you really know about him? Well, it turns out Ezra was stalking your father. The PI read about a huge fire at Midori Energy the week before your parents' accident. He spoke to a few people and found out that the fire destroyed important documents which contained all the research for Midori's latest project.
The documents which were destroyed was your father's and Ezra's research. Ezra didn't take the loss well. Right after the fire, Ezra accused your father of purposely sabotaging him by setting their research on fire. Right. It didn't make sense. Nobody believed him and they chalked up his breakdown to stress. But he wouldn't let it go. He accosted your father many times at work demanding answers. It got so bad that he was assigned a leave of absence by the company. On the day of the accident, your parents had lunch at a cafe. The PI asked the waitstaff if they remembered seeing your parents there, and they did. As were two. Yeah, he'd followed them there and was already clearly intoxicated. He demanded that they pay him all the money he would have made upon completion of the project. Obviously, your father refused and continually maintained his innocence. Ezra became so disruptive, the manager had to forcibly remove him from the cafe. That's when they received the call from Nikki. You might be right. You do what you need to do.
The fact that you are watching this now means something must have gone wrong. I'm sorry. By putting this technology in Eagle, I have potentially endangered you. But I... I don't know where else I can keep it safe. Meteory Energy doesn't fully understand the scope of this research. They're willing to sell it to anyone without considering the consequences. Companies which would weaponize this technology will cause irreparable damage. They could create energy explosions 13 times the force of a nuclear bomb. That's why I caused the fire. I burned all copies of my research to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. It's hard to completely destroy 20 years of research. Especially when this technology could bring so much good. The possibilities would have been endless. This new format of energy may function similarly to existing methods, but the fundamental principles are vastly different and have far wider scalability implications. And that is why this core is sitting in Eagle now. I'm sorry for getting you involved. I'm sorry I couldn't follow through with what I started. But most of all, I'm sorry I wasn't able to tell you this in person. I probably don't say this enough, but I'm so proud of who you've grown up to be. I know, if you're watching this, that I've put a heavy burden on your shoulders. But I trust you will make the right decision. My only hope is that you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Take care of your sister. Goodbye, son.
Hello? Okay, where are you? Okay. What's going on? You're acting a little strange. Does it have anything to do with that? What is it? Why do you have your core's data in your hands? Obviously, but why? That's so... I mean... How does... Gah! That's not it. Well, it is a lot to take in, but... I'm sorry your dad put this burden on you. But, if he had to trust somebody with this decision, I suppose he was right to trust you. It's what I would have done. Your core was way more than just a core. Knowing that, how could you continue to use it in the same way? Besides, we can always find you a new core. I'm sure Valerie would enjoy the challenge of building a core from scratch. And you already have some experience in doing that. Plus, I could help too. Although, if you want to get rid of the source data completely, you might want to talk to Valerie. Since she's worked on your core, she might have a copy of blueprints or something. Better than you acting like a pervert all the time. Sorry, I didn't mean to make light of the situation. You can't change what's happened in the past, so there's no use dwelling on it. I know. It's okay to want to make sense of things, but only if that will help you process what has happened. If you want to find answers, I will help you. Yes.
Who said anything about that? Don't be stupid.